Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give you all my tips for a good arabesque. So I think as dancers, we usually know what are our strengths and our weaknesses. And I'd say that arabesques are one of my more strengths. So I'm gonna try and share all the things that I do and that work for me to get a nice arabesque. And I hope that they will also be helpful for you guys as well. So the way that I think about ballet movements is I usually break it down into three parts. Flexibility, strength, and technique. And you really need all three of those to get good at an arabesque. So first I'm going to show you some stretches which I think are really good for helping to make your back more flexible, which is obviously very important for an arabesque. And then I'm also going to show you a couple of exercises to help with strengthening. And then I'm also going to talk about things that we should be thinking about when it comes to the technique of an arabesque. Because I think especially with an arabesque, Sometimes we can start to take shortcuts with the technique, but I think really you need to have mastered like the pure classical technique before you then start doing little tricks and shortcuts for things like when you're dancing on stage. So one of the most important things for a good arabesque is to have a flexible back. So we're going to work on that first. So to stretch the upper back, I'm going to come just up to my elbows and then try and push my ribs into the mat I'm looking straight, keeping my shoulders down. So shoulders down and back, ribs pushing into the mat. And stretch here. And then we're gonna come up to full cobra. And again, shoulders back and down. And a slight lift in the sternum, going diagonally upwards. So to stretch out our legs, I personally like this one. So your front leg is bent. And then what we're going to do is bring this hip down to the floor, square your hips off, and you'll feel the stretch probably in this glute and possibly here. And we're going to, from here, you can see that my bottom leg is in parallel at the moment, we're going to rotate this hip because that is the arabesque position and you'll feel the rotation here. So we're going to rotate here, really thinking about straightening that back knee. And lower again. Stretch again, relax everything, and then rotate again, and release. And of course we need to do both legs, so stretching out first, and then rotating the hip, keeping the knee nice and straight, and relax. Let your hip drop into the stretch, and then again, rotating, but not twisting my body. My body is staying, here, it's just this rotation inside the hip. So once we've done those stretches, we can also work on strength. So for strength, from here, I can test the strength of my upper back by letting go of the floor and holding, and then we can do the same in the cobra position. Now you're also gonna need to not only use your back here, but also your glutes. So squeezing everything, and if you're not sure yet, just let go of one hand at a time. And then once you've built up strength over time, you can try it and let go of both hands. So a good way to do it is to put one arm in fifth, and then let go. And always stretch out your back once you've finished. So another good one for strength is on all fours, we straighten one leg, and this is the important bit. Turn it out, so rotate that leg outwards from the hip, not lifting the hip, hip stays exactly in the same position, it's just the rotation of the leg, and then we're going to lift up, slow and controlled, keeping the abs engaged, if this doesn't happen, keeping the abs engaged, and then lower it down, keeping the turn out, keeping the turn out, keeping the turn out, and back up, keeping the turn out, and down. And exactly the same with the other leg, so straighten the back leg, turn it out, remember don't lift the hip, abs engage, and then slowly up, keeping the turn out, and back down, don't lift the hip or drop the hip, hip stay square, keeping the leg rotated, and up, abs engage, and down. So now let's think about the technique of an arabesque. So of course, as in all positions in ballet, in an arabesque, both legs need to be turned out. And I think sometimes we forget about the supporting leg. So sometimes we see arabesques where the supporting leg is almost in parallel 
to enable us to turn out this leg. But really, we need to have both legs turned out. So that's the first thing to think about. So the other thing that we need to think about in arabesque is not to lift this hip. I know that by lifting this hip, we think we're getting the leg higher, but we're not using the right muscles. The hip should stay square, and then from there we lift. And it's okay if you don't get it very high at first. It's much more important to have the correct technique and then to work the correct muscles, and then you'll be able to get it higher slowly, slowly. Then from the beginning, opening up the hip and doing these kinds of things to get it higher, but you're not using the right muscles. So the other mistake that I sometimes see with arabesque is the torso going forward way too soon. You don't really need to move the torso until you're above 90. Now you will need to make a little bit of space here, so there is like a sensation of elongating here, but it's not, it's not falling forward at all. Of course when we come to a ponche then the body will be going forward, but not for an arabesque. So let's go through one together. So I'm going to start in first position, obviously both legs are turned out, and this supporting leg is not going to move, it's not going to turn in at any point. So the first step of an arabesque is obviously a tendu derriere. So even from here, I'm already thinking about rotating the leg, but keeping the hip square. So not rotating the leg and opening the hip. Hip stays where it is, but the leg is rotating. And then from there, I'm just lifting it, keeping both legs nice and straight, nice and straight. And there, I've managed to get it to 90 degrees without really moving my torso. Then obviously if we're going into a planche, I can let my torso come forward. Another little tip is to think that your little toe is going up towards the ceiling, so we don't really want to see this kind of line. Yes, I'm pointing my toe, but you see how it kind of almost curves the line down? I want to think about my little toe going to the ceiling, and that creates that nice line. So guys, I really hope this video was helpful. I hope it makes sense how you can break these things down into flexibility, strength, and technique. And you see how important it is to have all of those three things working together. As always, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.